So I've found this sample on Malware Bazaar. There's a threat type of just unknown at the moment. A fair amount of vendors say, yeah, it's detected. Some say it's benign and it was uploaded by this user Venom Strike, downloaded from this particular URL. Let's dive into this and see what we're looking at. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the binary. Virus total says, yeah, it's a it's an Android Trojan dropper or it's got hidden ads. Is it adware or is it something a little bit more menacing? So what we can do is use a tool such as JDX, specifically JDX GUI, in order to get some more information about what this particular binary is doing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my sample. And now we've got a lot more information. On the left hand side under the resources there is something that we should really be looking at whenever we open up a android package such as this an apk file and uh, that is the android manifest and the reason is because this details so much about the application such as the permissions that it is requesting the particular activities associated with it now an activity in the android world is pretty much a way of interacting with an application. So basically activating parts of that particular application. And tied to that is also something known as a target activity. Let's start looking at this particular sample. We can see that it is requesting permissions such as access to the internet, receive network information, being able to make it full screen over your particular mobile device, uh, being able to get your Add ID, a little bit interesting, being able to get your external storage, send notifications, wake up your machine. You'll also notice that the package down here is known as com.draw.nearme.gamecenter. Now, if you actually look at this package in the Google Play Center, it has nothing to do with the sample that we're looking at here. So it looks like it's probably masquerading as this another sign that maybe this is a little bit suspicious we have an android label of the app name here uh, we've got this particular icon associated with this android name associated with this application as a whole is defined under jb.ofv.brec now, if we actually begin to look at jb.ofv, there is a .brec here. So this is essentially what's going to be triggered when the application is launched. A little bit further on, there's this allow clear user data, false. That allow clear user data is supposed to be essentially specifying that you can't clear the user data associated with this application. However, there is something a little bit intricate in that this is supposed to only apply to applications that are installed on your device. So in this particular case, this permission may be completely ignored. There's also Android allow backup. So this is when you back up your device, does this application get backed up with it? And because this is set to false, it's a little bit suspicious. Once again, almost looks like it's trying to hide on the device, the base application. And then under that, there are providers for particular, essentially uh, functions. So these providers are essentially like functions there is these activities that are set to also exclude from recents. So they're trying not to be shown under your recently used applications or activities. I guess when you try to swap applications on your Android device and it shows all of the applications that were previously open, this is going to hide it from that as well. There is these activities that are defined under different classes of the Android name. And you'll notice that there are classes such as OEFV, but then there's this XVFBP. And on the left-hand side, we actually can't see that as one of the classes. The same applies to Y, FSR. All of these classes don't actually exist in what we are examining here, which tells us there's a good chance that a dynamically loaded class is going to occur at runtime. Continuing to go down, there are these intent filters. Okay, so these are all associated with a path prefix of slash open, which is essentially tied to an intent, which, which can be broadly defined as an action to be performed on this particular uh, device. So opening, say, a file, if we begin to look down, this is the particular definition of an activity. There is another definition of an activity here as the JB OEFV ST 
WWB. Once again, this class does not exist, but it's got this icon. So this IC underscore book, it's basically got this label of book readers. And what this is saying is when you try to open up a, let's say a file and it's essentially prompts you, what application do you want to, to open this with? The same as Windows would do when you go right click open with. What it's gonna be saying to the user is book reader. And, but what that's actually defining is this activity associated with these particular classes. So this OEFVRB is the name and the activity that will be run essentially when you open it is this STWWB. So once again, classes that we can't see and we can't get a better idea of what they're doing. The same thing applies here. Another thing defined, this is a presentation a text viewer, an Excel viewer, all these different files, it is masquerading as to essentially say, I am the application that you should open this particular file with. But there's also stuff as we go down, for example, Snapchat. So if it's associated with Snapchat, something that would open with Snapchat, it will prompt once again, I am Snapchat. I'm the legitimate application you should open this with. And there's also other prefixes. So these are associated with essentially trying to go to the Snapchat website. Once again, proxying through this particular Android application. All very interesting things. And this goes on for a while. So there's Zoom, Twitter, Telegram, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, Chrome browser. So targeting specific websites associated with the Chrome browser. An incognito browser. Um, this is this is more adult material by the looks of things. It looks like uh, it's trying to determine if, when you're using an incognito browser, you're accessing any of these kind of adult-related websites. So when we're actually looking at the class that runs when we run this application, this Brex class extends the application class, and it's what's going to run. So you can see it's creating a new instance of OBP class and is essentially then doing the run method associated with it. When we essentially create this, there is this JKSF class that is then running a method of QIVAJ. Now you'll notice this isn't within the package jb.oefv anymore. This is actually within this PTM package. So if we follow this, this is what's going to begin to occur as soon as the application is run. After it gets this path list, it's actually specifying this as the object that it's looking at. And if we begin to look more into that, we are actually getting this DEX object from the assets of the particular application that we are looking at. It's this 20F13937 that's sitting in the resources or the assets associated with what we're analyzing. And that is then being written to a file called 73D21490.dex. If we were to extract the files, and so we actually look into this and we look at the assets, there is in fact this 20F13937, which is a dex application. Now a DEX application in itself should have the same as a zip archives header, so it should be PK onwards. But if we look at this in a hexadecimal editor, it looks like it's just gibberish. And that's because there's some sort of XOR encryption going on. So we've got that there. And if we look down, there is this pseudo random number that's being generated for the bytes. It's being read and an XOR operation is occurring against that array based on the particular random string that we generated. I'm going to use the code itself to give me what I want. So if we open up VS Code, I can now copy components of that particular Java class like I've done here and essentially continue that operation to get that class that's going to be reflectively loaded into memory. So there is this file output stream I've defined and a lot of the code is similar here, slight differences in some of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it to a file called 73d21490.dex, but I'm going to need to get uh, a place the 20f file within our downloads directory. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this out. So I've now got this dex file there. And what I'm going to do is just simply run the code. This goes ahead and compiles it and does it. And now you can see that we have this other dex file. It's the exact same size. The difference is that it has been decrypted. If we look at it in a hex editor, you can now see it's called classes.dex, which rings a bell to what we saw earlier. And it's got the PK header associated with it. So what we could actually do is use something like 7-zip to extract these files and then look at it and we've got a classes.dex file here. So let's try to open this up in JDX GUI. Now there is one error that's been reported, but all in all, we've got a lot more information of interest. Remember this was trying to execute this STWWB class that we didn't have before. And now we can see where that's actually been defined. A lot more information now associated with this and we can begin to piece together what we saw before. Okay, so basically it looks like it's detecting whether you have some sort of package to open up these applications. And if you do, after essentially proxying it through this, it will open up with your legitimate application. So it will function in a similar way to if you just open it with your default application of TikTok, Instagram, WhatsApp. So to you, it's kind of supposed to be transparent in that it's created these proxies in order to run the legitimate application or prompt you to download it from Google Play. However, something that's of interest is when we begin to look at the Android classes that are defined. So remember that these Android names and activities are things that could happen. So interacting with them in some way, shape or form. And there is this OYF that has been defined and you can see that we've actually been able to decompile that particular class. So you can see on resume, notification comes up saying permission is required for the application to work correctly. And then it is prompting a user to give it more permissions. If we look at open browser that triggers here, this begins to look a little bit more suspicious. So it will open up your browser, but it will be specifying a URL of this whooshpush.com and registering this user ID that is defined. Basically, it's sending an identifier by the looks of things to this particular whoosh push URL. Now, that's a little bit interesting to me, but there's actually a little bit more because uh, this is going to have something that is to do with runnable. There is a particular intent that this registers. So an intent can be used to launch an activity. So this is going to be what's running those activities. I'm no expert in Android malware analysis, but this is kind of my understanding of how this all functions. Now, if we begin to go back and look at what happens when this is running, there is flags that are assigned to it, and there is this start activity with the intent. Now, if we look at what activity has been started, uh, it's an instance of this OYF class. So this is to do with on creation. Um, it's got an, another intent, intent registered here that is the ZY class as opposed to that particular one. So if we look at the ZY class, there is now reference to looking at whether the screen is off, if that's the action um, that's being occurred. And it's talking about intent at show. So this could actually be indicating that it is trying to show an advertisement to the end user. We can actually see that it's, it, it's tries to get particular user agent um, from your settings or from this web view particular class, get application contacts, get settings. So I'm, I'm assuming that this application can have configured user agent within it, perhaps. Uh, but what's funny here is that if it fails, it's just going to set the user agent to oops, I did it again. So, so uh, probably an indicator to look out for on your network devices to see if you've got this, whatever it is. Content action add show equals it's going to be checking if particular things are set. This is a bit interesting. Once again, you've got oops equals one. 
So this is actually going to be sent in a request somewhere to a URL build versions or manufacturer or models. If it can't get that information, uh, it just uses oops equals one. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, this particular information tied down here as well. This client.config format advert key. So once again, showing ads or dropping DEX files or classes on this particular phone that has installed this. So very interesting. When this particular thing gets destroyed, it is removing the callbacks, the runnable callbacks that it has used. Config exception, always interesting seeing these messages being sent or, or logged, I should say. Validation exception, config response networks empty, config is dumb, config is updated. So it looks like maybe you can push down new configuration to this. But this is where we get interesting again. You can see there is DEX elements. This is in the clear now. It's no longer obfuscated. And there is this particular uh, reflection being done as well into memory. So there's a good chance that there is another class with more particular information that's occurring here. Uh, you can see DEX is load. All right, so if we're looking through it, there is this interesting class, this square up dot leak canary and this is configuration associated with this particular application so you can see the application id is is set as com.draw.nearme.gamecenter build type is release debug false flavor managers managers of what exactly the version the version name the asset name, so this is what we saw before, and the dex name, and then even that string that's being used to generate the random key. Another build config under the next G here as well. So this is doing a similar thing. You've got advert with a base64 encoded string possibly here, as well as the domain that is the one.conf best top. Dot com. There's a, a few more of these under the com, com class as well. So maybe they've got a number of affiliates and they basically will allow deploying of DEX classes and advertisements to particular devices, perhaps. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought about that analysis. Like I said, I'm not an expert in Android malware analysis by any stretch of me, but this is going to give you a bit of an idea on how to get more information from a particular Android package file.